in all of the debate about, you know, we don't do science on the Joe Rogan experience because that's not a venue of science, and you can hardly expect a scientist to engage a non-scientist in an unscientific venue of a comedian or whatever the hell that discussion is. The question is, well, okay. This people is, are so not serious. This is having to be worked out by, you know, Professor of Risk Norman Fenton on his substack in order for it to reach enough people to matter right, via Dark Horse, and then who knows what else. But the point is we are being forced to do the work in the places that do not seem like the right place for the work because the work is not being done in the places that do seem like the right place for the work. And that haunts every one of these discussions, right? Why is it happening on the Joe Rogan experience? Because it's not happening elsewhere, mm-hmm. right? You know, and, and so anyway. No, I mean, it's... it's... <sighs> The people who would tell us not to look at the at the man behind the curtain are doing the same. I mean, I, we've talked about this before, but I, I used I used to start out all of my programs when I when we were professors when I was a professor uh, by saying, you know, what what is science? Let's talk that through. And what does a scientist look like? What do scientists have? And you know, I'd have a slide be like, oh, a scientist definitely has an advanced degree and probably wears a lab coat and has a lot of fancy glassware, expensive instrumentation, and definitely some big grants, hopefully from the NSF or NIH, depending on you know what kind of research they're doing. And like, no, 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 you don't need any of that, right? And in fact, increasingly, the more of those things you have, maybe the more likely <laughs> that you're actually not doing any science at all. These proxies for science that are useful for those who don't think scientifically, who don't think of themselves as scientists, go like, oh God, I'm supposed to follow the science, I'm supposed to trust the science, we live in a post-religion world, I'm a secularist, I don't know what to believe, I know I'm supposed to trust the science, oh, I'm gonna look for the guy in the lab coat over there. Uh, does he have a degree? Cool. Is he uh, tenured somewhere? Awesome. Does he have a lot of grants? Terrific. Okay, I'm gonna listen to him. Not the way science works. Just not the way it works. So all you've done is replace one authority for another and are you surprised that the new authority is lying to you? Well, you're not because you don't yet understand that the new authority is lying to you, but they but they are patently and they have been for three years. No, you know, maybe it's closer to 30, but like <laughs> that's what they're doing. So the proxies are not sufficient. That's not what science is. Those people aren't scientists. And the ones who are like, oh, I, you know, I am an esteemed scientist and I'm not going to go on Rogan. Like, well, you already went on Rogan, dude. Like, what were you doing then right. if you weren't talking about science? So... I think it is certainly true that that is not science. But yeah. the thing that is hard to convey is the degree. We all have an impression of science because we all know that we are standing on a huge accumulated bed of wisdom produced by this method that has made us into the modern creatures that we are mm-hmm. and has provided tremendous benefits and insights and we feel enlightened, right? That is what happens when science is done properly. But it is the flip side of another coin. Science is so capable, and because of the things that make it capable, it is also extremely fragile, right? It is so easy to do something that is scientific looking in every regard, screw it up in one place, and come up with the inverse of the right answer because, for lots of reasons, because science is done on the honor system, because it assumes that what you're trying to do is be right in the long run rather than get tenure or something like this. Yeah, it seems you're seeking truth rather than self-adulation. Right. And so the point is, our system is a complete mess. It happens that at this moment, actually, you are more likely to encounter a reliable scientific claim on Joe Rogan than you are in, you know... The, the lab Lancet. building, the Lancet, for example, right? That does not mean that every claim made on Joe Rogan is right, but it just means that the people who are trying to be right may well be sitting in those chairs on Rogan's podcast. And if you're inside of the academy, it may be that there's an enforced orthodoxy that you're, you know, you're claiming that sex isn't binary or you're claiming that these vaccines are vaccines and that they're safe and effective because if you do anything else, it's catastrophic for your career. Mm -hmm. So how you can't do science under, science cannot be done under those circumstances. That's the problem. Medicine as, um, you know, broadly a subset of like applied science. Yep. You know, (laughs) in a world where your medical practitioners insist on referring uh, to women about to give birth as birthing people, 
Yeah. That's not going to be a place where you can go to and expect to hear hard truths. It's not gonna like you. You already know you're being lied to, and I don't know whose feelings exactly they're protecting. I mean, I kind of do, but why is why are anyone's feelings being protected over the seeking of truth and the revealing of reality? Sometimes it's going to be ugly. Often it's not. But regardless, that's what we are trying to do.